morning, CFA family. What's up, guys? It's so good to see you again. Uh, are you happy to be able to see people? Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you guys are here with us this morning. Before we jumped off into service and into worship, I wanted to take just a second, and I wanted to introduce you guys to a little guy named Jude Oliver Decker. So he won't wave, but you can wave at him if you'd like. Um, <laughs> And Haley and I really just wanted to say thank you guys so much. Uh, we call him our miracle baby, and you guys played a huge, huge role um, in, in us, I mean, having him and us believing. Um, I think a lot of you guys know the journey that we were on. Uh, and so I just thank you guys so much for praying with us, for believing with us, for praying over us and over him. Thank you guys, and we love you guys so incredibly much. I wish I could pass him around to you individually, but we're not doing that. So, um, but yeah. Oh, and also, I told Connor earlier, I really just want to hug everybody right now. I just want to hug all of you. So just know that in my heart, I want to hug you. Um, so, who's excited to worship? Woo woo! Woo, let's go ahead and stand all across this place, and we'll just welcome the presence of the Lord. To those who are watching online with us today, good morning. We miss you. We wish you were here with us today, um, but we're thankful that you're staying safe, and um, we're just excited to have every single person here, those online and those who are here with us today. God is good, isn't he? Amen. In spite of all of this, he's been faithful and good. Amen? Amen. Amen. God, we just welcome you in this place today. Lord, we ask for your presence to just fill this house, Lord, to fill uh, the homes of each person watching online today. Lord, let your glory fall. God, let your presence surround us. Let your love and, and invade this place today. God, come and do what only you can do. Have your way this morning. God, let your freedom reign. Let your freedom reign. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Since you are 
prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. And lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. for your victory. God, that we are more than conquerors in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, and 
And every war he wages he will win And I'm not backing down from any giant I know how this story ends Yes, I know We 
we're gonna see a victory we're gonna see a victory for the battle oh and our families jesus we're gonna see a victory we're gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you lord and we're gonna see a victory we're gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you lord oh yes hallelujah hallelujah over our finances Jesus oh we declare freedom we declare freedom God hallelujah over our city Lord over our nation Jesus oh victory 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 out of the kingdom so
salvation you are our healing you are our deliverance you are our everything you are everything we need and everything we could ever want and today we worship you we thank you for your love we thank you for your salvation we thank you for your freedom that we can encounter your glory and your presence that we can experience the beauty of relationship with you God today We thank you for your presence and your Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. We thank you for your love and your protection. We thank you, Lord, for the fulfillment of your word and your promises as we continue to see your kingdom come and your will being done. God, as we continue to see you move and work even in the midst of the enemy's schemes to steal, kill, and destroy, we thank you that you are good, that you are mighty, that you are awesome, and that you are more than victorious, that because of what you did on the cross, because of the of the victory that you have accomplished, that you have want for us, that God, we can experience life and life more abundantly, Lord, that we can rest in knowing that no matter what the battle is today, no matter what the storm is today, that God, you are on the throne and that you are in control and we worship you and we thank you for your love. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your goodness. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. God, we love you today. Lord, I pray for those in this room and those that are joining online today that, Lord, healing would flow over sick bodies. God, I thank you that you're healing high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, and incurable diseases today, that, God, you are the healer that we need. Lord, we ask for healing today, and we believe that we'll receive because your word says it's possible. God, I thank you for souls that are being saved today, those that have never known your love. They've heard about you, maybe. They've, they've heard, heard stories of you, but, God, they've never had a chance to know you. I thank you today that they're being introduced to the love of God, to a relationship with you, to know that they can have peace, hope, healing, and redemption, that they have purpose and meaning and destiny today. God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, and we ask that you would just continue to move this morning in our lives. Let us encounter and experience you in Jesus' name, we pray. God, we thank you for it. We give you the glory, honor, and praise. In your name, amen and amen. If you believe that this morning, would you give the Lord a hand clap and a shout of praise? Come on, like you've seen the victory this morning. Amen. Like you've seen the victory today. Jesus, we worship you. God, we thank you for your love. 
We thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping this morning. You can be seated. Man, it feels good to be able to say that. And, uh, and not just apply to Austin and Haley and uh, Floyd and Diane. It's wonderful. Um, so good to see each and every one of you that are here. Tell your neighbor, you never look so good. I know you got to say it a little louder because they're a little farther away. Don't breathe too hard. All right. Um, but listen, we're glad you're here. I know it's, uh, I know it's different and it's unique um, and it's a little bit of, uh, unaccustomed to what we have been accustomed to, but uh, I'm thankful that we're able to be together again and be able to spend time uh, together in His presence. And so thanks for your patience and uh, for being here. For those that can't join us uh, yet, we, we miss you and we love you and we can't wait to see you and we're praying for you. And um, I'm thankful for God's goodness, for His blessings, for His favor, for His protection, for His answered prayers. Still excited about that miracle baby? Amen. We prayed and we believed and God answered. Amen. And uh, every time I see that boy, I can't help but think about the prayers that we prayed gathered in these altars day in and day out. Every time Titus was around grabbing the anointing oil and praying, he's still trying to pray for Haley. She might, en- she might end up pregnant. And uh, the faith of a child, it changes things. Uh, but no, we're, uh, we're excited. And uh, just been, been awesome to see what God has continued to do in spite of the enemy's schemes. In spite of the enemy's schemes. We've still been doing what he called us to do. We've still been sharing the gospel and the good news all around the world, right here at home, and we're continuing to see his plan, his promises, and his purposes fulfilled in our lives. And I'm excited, excited, excited about it. I want to just uh, want to remind you of a couple of things, and then I'm going to ask Pastor Brandy to come and share. Um, we obviously in phase one are not able to have our nursery and our kids area open so we're bringing just a small segment of kids church right here to you and so we're asking everybody to participate all right so for all my introverts you got your wish you're six feet apart from everybody else in the room all right so that means you've got freedom to be able to be like some of the extroverts in the room all right and uh, and participate I thought they had three months off and they'd be ready, but they ain't there yet. All right, our announcements this morning are this. Please remember at the end of service um, to put your face mask on as you leave. We're going to try to let those that are in the back of the room exit out first as much as possible. If you need to get up and use the restroom during service, no problem. Feel free to do so. Just put your face mask on before you go. If there's two people already in there, uh, wait in the hallway until they exit and then go in. We're trying to do our best with our uh, restrooms and meeting the social distance uh, guidelines and requirements. Thank you for wearing your masks in today. And uh, as, as we said before, you are more than welcome to take those off while you're in your seat so you can breathe. Uh, but if you feel more comfortable leaving that on, that's okay. There's uh, uh, no pressure from, from any of us. Uh, whatsoever. Giving today is going to be online as it has been or on your way out today. We will have uh, two ushers that will be available at the back and uh, they'll be be there to receive your offering on the way out. Tithe envelopes and pens have been made available for you on the seats. Those will all be cleared out at the end of service and uh, new ones will be put out after everything's been disinfected and ready to go for our service next week. Wednesday night services are continuing online. Of course, just as there's no kids or nursery, there's also no students uh, uh, service on Wednesdays or adult services on Wednesdays. We're just going to have, I know, boo, it's sad. And uh, it's awful, isn't it? And, but we're going we're gonna to continue to do our Sunday morning services. And as soon as we're able to move into the next phase of things, uh, we'll let you know. Every Thursday... I'm, I'm posting an update video just to let you know if there's any changes to what the CDC is recommending or if Governor Hutchinson is making adjustments uh, to the guidelines and requirements for churches or if we move into phase two and what that's going to look like for us as a church. So um, things are changing by the minute. And so uh, they have been since the beginning of this. And so we felt the easiest way to do that is just to say every Thursday 
We're going to update you, let you know. So you can catch that on the app or on our Facebook page, and we'll keep you posted um, on what's happening. Kids' services are going to continue to be available online, so you can jump on there anytime throughout the week and watch those. We'll have that posted in the app today and on our Facebook page. And uh, as Brandy's coming, this lesson or this power verse, I should say, today uh, that's coming, uh, that she's coming to share is part of that lesson today. So we love having the kids in service with us. Amen? 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 Amen. And, um, you know, I said this in one of my update videos, and I'll say it again. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's uh, any greater way for kids to experience um, what we do as the church than to be in the middle of what we're doing as the church for them to see you worship and those around you worship and to pray and to engage the Word. I just think it's one of the greatest opportunities. So we're thrilled to have kids in service with us. And kids, they, they, they have fun. They're not, they're not worried about anything, and so um, you don't be worried about it either. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll enjoy having them with us and being a part of what's happening. So Brandy, I'm going to let you come and uh, bring CFA kids into the sanctuary today. And give all of us an awesome opportunity to engage and participate. All right? Amen? Amen. Welcome Brandy as she comes. Well, I am one of those introverts he talked about. So if you if I can be up here, y'all can say this with me when this video comes on, right? I mean, it's not too bad. Um uh, Number eight is the lesson we're on for any of our kids that have been watching online. It's a great resource, and we will have that up in the app. And our message today is Redeemed. So it's called The Story is About Ruth and Boaz. And so Rico is going to throw up my video, and we're going to all say the power verse with our wonderful chef that's going to be on here. He is awesome. I don't have my candy bucket, but... Y'all get in it with me. Cause I like to cook tacos like soup. Oh, hey boys and girls, it's me, Terry, Terry Yonke. And I was just getting ready to cook up something tasty for my restaurant, Nice Rice. As you know, I'm kind of famous for getting things scrambled. Well, today's power verse is extra scrambled, and I need your help. Let's take a look at it. And we know that 828 causes everything to work together for the good of those who love Romans and are called according to his purpose for them. God, God. Um, wrong. This is very, very mixed up. Kind of like that time a lady asked me to make her a cup of hot cocoa and I made a cup of hot dogs. She wasn't very happy. Anyway, boys and girls, I need your help getting this power verse unscrambled. Let's look at it together. Hmm. And we know that 828. Nope, that's not right. Those numbers mean something else. What do you think they're for? Yes. Let's move them to the end. <laughs> Causes everything to work together for the good of those who love Romans. Oh, that doesn't sound right either. Where does Romans go? That's right, the scripture reference. It goes right before 828. <laughs> and are called according to his purpose for them. God, God, Romans 8, 28. Hmm, I think God and God don't go with the scripture references. Maybe they go in those two blanks. Yes, that's it. I think we have it. Let's try saying it all together on the count of three. So stand up and say it with me. One, two, three. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Romans 8, 28. That's a great power verse. Let's make sure we can remember it so next time we don't get it mixed up in our brains. Stand up again and let's say it on the count of three. One, two, three. 
And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Romans 8, 28. Great job, boys and girls. Now, I've got to get back to making this jello. Or is it peanut butter? Either way, until next time, this is Teriyaki saying, Jello, can I get some peanut butter? Thank y'all for helping Teriyaki. He has a really big problem getting things mixed up, as you can tell. Um, I didn't bring my candy bucket. That usually helps motivate. So next time, if y'all are really good adults, I'll bring my candy. And if y'all help me, I'll, I'll give you some candy. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Brandy. Awesome verse and um, a powerful reminder that God works all things together uh, for the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. You know, uh, I think in, um, in, in everything that's happening, I think it's, it's so important for us to remember um, that uh, God knows exactly what the enemy is up to. And uh, he's, not caught, he's not caught off guard and He's not caught by surprise and He has, um, he has a plan. Um, and he has a plan in place. Um, so check out, for all of our parents, check out the kids' service online. Um, and if you're giving today, giving online, you can do that. Uh, you can give through Kingdom Builders on there. You can give on your way out today. And I just want to say uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for continuing to give, uh, not just tithes, but even above that, to Kingdom Builders. It's been awesome what we've been able to do to partner um, with the ministries that God has given us an opportunity to. Project Rescue, in the middle of all of this, and meeting online only, we still had $7,000 that came in as part of our uh, $10,000 goal. And I say praise the Lord for that. I think it's awesome. Amen. Amen. And um, it's not too late to give. And so if you want to, uh, if you want to give to that, please, uh, if the Lord puts it on your heart, you can still do so online. We've still got a, a part, a tab on there for you to do that. Uh, and you can always give to that in person. Convoy of Hope, a ministry that we've partnered with uh, for many, many years, who uh, responds in the middle of any kind of crisis or pandemic. They have given, uh, they started an initiative several weeks ago uh, to give 10 million meals away in the middle of all of this to families that are in need. And they have superseded that. And part of what we were able to give this year uh, to Convoy of Hope has been a part of that, of ministering to families that are in need. And so they're now in beyond 10 million and are still giving meals away and ministering to families in need. But a uh, wonderful ministry that responds in the middle of whatever crisis, whatever unexpected event, they step up to the plate. And so I'm thankful that we get to be a part of that and uh, that we are able to step up and do whatever the Lord calls us to as opportunities become available. And more than anything, I'm thankful for your prayers, uh, for continuing to seek the Lord, for continuing to stay engaged in what God's doing. And so we're continuing to do that and believe uh, for healing and to believe for uh, just the fulfillment of everything that God wants to do in the middle of everything that's happening. But I'm excited to, uh, excited to be able to share the word with you uh, this morning, and I'm excited to be able to preach uh, to some people it is so good to preach to some people. I know I've been I know I've been been preaching on camera, but it's not the same. And I'll, let me just say this: social media is not the same. Online is not the same as in person. And I'm thankful for online. Don't get me wrong. I think it's I think it was a game changer in the middle of all of this for the church to be able to still worship together and hear the word together and and stay connected um, that route. But listen, it does not take the place of being together. And because uh, you look so much better um, in person than you do when I'm looking at that screen and I'm having to just imagine you. And so, um, but uh, I'm thankful that we can, I'm thankful that we can be in one place and I'm looking forward to everyone that can't be with us uh, who can uh, down the road. And so we're praying for that. James chapter one is where we're headed this morning. This past week I shared, or this past Wednesday, if you missed um, the Wednesday Devo, I shared just uh, briefly uh, out of this, and I want to share just a little bit deeper um, in this word with you today. And um, as we are, uh, as we're turning there, um, you know, I the, the title of my message this morning is is What is my response? What is my response? 
And um, I, want to, I want to dive into the Word because I know there's a lot that's going on right now in our world today, not just with the pandemic and, and COVID-19 and everything that that has brought and that that has introduced into the mix, but uh, along with everything else that we, have, that we have faced and that we have gone through um, as a nation. And I want to share this message today uh, because I believe it's important for us as the church to remember and to know what our response is and, uh, and, how, to, and how to respond uh, to situations and the circumstances that are happening in our world. Um, because the truth is, is as the church, um, we, have, we have a purpose, uh, we have a mission, we have an identity, we are ambassadors for the kingdom of heaven, and uh, we, have, we have a reason uh, for being here. I, I say on a regular basis to, uh, to all of us as a reminder that we have, uh, we have a purpose and we have a destiny. And I firmly believe that. I believe every person that's on this earth has a purpose and a destiny because you were created in the image of God. And when God created you, he created you with purpose. God created you with purpose and he gave you gifts and talents and abilities. Some of you gifts and talents and abilities that I don't have. I, I was thinking about that even during worship this morning. I thought, poor Haley. She's got to sing with her brother who's halfway tone deaf and can't keep, uh, can't keep the right sound necessarily in. And I'm just blaring out as loud as I can for Jesus and everybody to hear. And I thought, man, I really hope I'm not messing her up while she's singing. So if you're online today and she sounded a little off, it's my fault. The gift and talent that God gave me is not the same as the gift and the talent that God gave her. Some of us can't sing. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't sing. It just means that we don't have that gift and that talent to necessarily lead in that ability. Just because you can't sing doesn't mean you shouldn't. It just means that you may not be the one that stands up and leads in that area or shouldn't lead in that area. And there's there's times there's times in our life where when it comes to when it comes to a point of us realizing that there are gifts, there are talents that God has given us because there's purpose and destiny that God has given us. And one of the biggest things that the enemy will try to do is he will try to convince people that they don't have purpose, that they don't have destiny, that they don't have identity, and that they don't belong. But you were created in the image of God. You have destiny. You have purpose. You are loved. You have promises. And you have blessings that are available to you through the word of God as a child of God. All you have to do is say yes to his love, yes to his word, yes to the salvation that he has for you. Experience the freedom and encounter those promises. But in, in all of that, what is my response? You know, with everything that's, that's happened recently, there's been, I've, I have felt an overwhelming pressure to respond. And anybody that, anybody that knows me knows that I don't like pressure because... The reason, the reason I don't like pressure is because pressure will often cause us to respond in a way that is not in line with who we are and the identity of, of who we are as a child of God, as a believer of God, and will cause us to say something that is out of character for who we are. The enemy uses pressure as a scheme to get you and I to speak, to get you and I to say, to get you and I to do, because he knows that in that moment... Instead of us using the discernment and the wisdom and the understanding of the Holy Spirit, we'll speak out of the emotion, the frustration, and the pressure that has been brought. The enemy uses pressure as condemnation to get you to respond instead of conviction from the Holy Spirit that brings about transformation and brings about change. So when the enemy brings pressure, when the enemy brings, when the enemy brings that, the, that scheme into play, what is the response of us as believers? How is it that we are called to respond as voices for Jesus, as the hands and feet of Christ, to see change, to see transformation, to see a shift happen in our world around us? Now more than ever, our world needs the Lord. Now more than ever, we need the love of God. Now more than ever, we need the peace of heaven. Now more than ever, we need the fulfillment of God's plan, of God's promises, of the purposes. So when all of, all of the, the chaos is breaking around us and the uncertainty that's happening through us, what is my response as a child of God? What is my reaction to what's happening around me? And I love what James chapter 1 says because it puts it into perspective. In verse number 19, he says, My dear brothers, take note 
note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Tell your neighbor, do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that freedom get, that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that, our God, that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows and their desires and to keep oneself and their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence and we thank you for your word. God, we ask that you would speak to our hearts today. Lord, I pray that where we have been uh, overwhelmed by what's happening in the world around us, overwhelmed by the battles that we're in today, that God, you would give us ears to hear what your Holy Spirit is saying, a heart that is open to receive the word of God, that you will give us revelation today with wisdom and discernment to speak your love, to speak your grace, and to speak your truth, that God, we would not allow the enemy to manipulate or to deceive or to try to use as the Deception, any tactic of the enemy from the truth of what you are bringing and the fulfillment of your plan and your promises. God, I pray today as we hear your word and as your anointing flows through this place that those that are sick would be healed, that those that are lost would be saved, that those that are bound would be set free, that every person that's joined us online would experience the same, that God, wherever we are today, that we would experience your glory and your presence and the power of your word and that our response would be your response today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. What is my response to what's happening in my life? What is my response when chaos, uh, when chaos breaks loose? What is my response when the unexpected happened? I think all of us would, would agree that uh, the unexpected has happened in many different ways this year. And we've been faced with the unexpected. We've been faced with the uncertainty. But any of us that have been alive for any amount of time would say that we have been faced with the unexpected. No matter how hard you plan, there's always something else. I said that I said that I think the other day I was I think I was talking to you know, I was talking to the staff and I said you know just when you think you've got everything taken care of there's something else just when you think you've got everything addressed there's something else that happens and the truth is is that the reason for that is is because we live this life with a realization that this world is still broken, that this world is still under a curse, and until the fulfillment of God's word from Genesis to Revelation has been met, we'll continue to still see that cycle, and we'll continue to still see those events. But understanding that we're going to face trials, understanding that we're going to face the unexpected, doesn't have to determine our response, because our response is to realize that Jesus already defeated death, hell, and the grave. Jesus Jesus already secured for us not only our salvation, but our healing and our deliverance. And that as children of God, we have not only the provision, but we also have the answer. And we also have the, the ability to respond in the world's crisis and events with the truth and the power of the Word of God. One of the last things of, of James in verse number uh, 26, he said, If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. I think sometimes if we're not careful, we'll talk ourselves out of the truth of what God's word says and the grace that he has for us. And so I want to share with you today, how can I respond to what's happening in my life and what's happening in the world around me? As a believer, how can I respond to what I see, to what I hear, to what I read as a child of God and with the perspective of heaven? There are three things that I want to share with you this morning. And the first is this. Number one, love. Tell your neighbor, love. You got quiet on me. Tell them love. Love. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about a love that's just about being in love. I'm not talking about 
um, just the, the love that we can define or that we can understand with our own human reasoning. I'm talking about the unconditional agape love of God. The love that sent Jesus to the cross, that God was willing to send a son and that Jesus was willing to come because he loved us so much. Not because we were perfect, not because we had it all together, not because we had met the standard or the line of, but because he loved us so much. God loved you so much in your worst, at your worst, if the, in, in all of the wrong that you have done and all of the wrong that I have done. He loved us so much that he came and he died for us. Because of his love, the unconditional, regardless love of God, what is my response to a world that is hurting and that is broken? Not just from a recent event, but from generations of sin, generations of wrong, generations of, of the, the chaos of, of a world that is broken by the curse of sin. What is my response? My response has to be Love. Love is the foundation of everything that we do as a believer in Jesus Christ. God was clear about it. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He sent His one and only Son that none would perish. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, clearly define that if you do not love, you do not know God because God is love. Love is the foundation of everything that we are. And as the church, as believers, and what's happening before we speak, the greatest thing we can do is listen and determine is my response, my immediate reaction, that that is based in the love of God, or is my reaction based on the emotion, the frustration, the pain, or the sin that's in my life? Thank you for that amen. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40, Jesus says this, he says in response to a question, what is the greatest commandment? What is the greatest law that God could give? Jesus' response is to love God with all your heart, your mind, and your strength. And he says the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. I think one of the greatest problems that we have in our society today, not just in the church but in the world as a whole, is we don't respond in love because we haven't learned the art of loving ourselves. The way that God loves us. Tell your neighbor you're loved by God. Tell them one more time they didn't understand you. You're loved by God. Tell the person that's six feet away from you on the other side you're loved by God. Tell them, tell them behind you you're loved by God. Yeah. You're loved. I think the biggest thing we need to remember and the greatest thing the world needs to hear today is that you are loved. You are loved and you are valued. You are loved by God who has done everything that he possibly can so that you can experience a love that does not measure you by who you are or who you've been, but by who he has created and called you to be with the destiny and the purpose and the gifts and the talents and the ability. I think if we would measure our response under the unconditional love of God, it would change the direction, the tone of voice and the inflection by how we address and how we respond to the situations that are around us to realize that even in my worst, even when I didn't know, even when I hadn't yet encountered, God loved me so much that he was willing to die for me so that I could experience that love. When we encounter that love, it changes the direction. It changes the reaction to the world around us. Amen. Preach it, brother. That's what I'm talking about. Love changes things. When you love somebody, you, are, you immediately position yourself to listen to what they have to say. Even if they're wrong. Listen before. This, this truth, this revelation of the Word of God is so powerful because it helps us to be able to respond in a way that presents the love of God, the mission that He's given us, that brings change, that brings healing, that brings tra transformation, that crushes the enemy's schemes to bring about the plan and the fulfillment of God. There's How many of you guys know the... How many of you guys use emojis on your phone? The smiley face, the... Yeah, the thumbs up, you use that on your phone, you hit those buttons. You know, you've got the hard eyes emoji. Any of you use the hard eyes emoji? All the moms in the room? Yeah, all the grandmas in the room use hard eyes. Some of you are like, what's an emoji? An emoji is 
we'll use the CFA logo as an example. An emoji would be like a circle like that, but instead of it saying CFA, you would have a smiley face on it, or if you're, um, if you're happy or really laughing hard, you'll have one that has the crying eyes, laughing emoji, or you'll have the one that has the heart eyes emoji. And, you know, the heart eyes, the heart eyes emoji is, is interesting because it really illustrates someone that, is, that has recently found themselves in love. Because if you watch anybody that's recently found themselves in love, there are things that they look past in the beginning of that relationship because of their heart eyes. Because they're so in love. You remember there are things that there are things that when your relationship first started that didn't they didn't get on your nerves. It didn't bother you. Some of you would say that's cute. <laughs> Ain't cute no more, is it? <laughs> Been together for a while. It's not so cute anymore. There's there's a there's a hard eyes reaction that you have when you fall in love with someone that causes you to almost look past or to see past those initial things that would irritate you, that would aggravate you if it were something that were to continue for any amount of time because you're so in love. And I think that in love moment really best demonstrates God's reaction towards us when He was willing to send His Son to die on the cross because instead of seeing you and I just for our sins, our faults, and our failures, he saw beyond that who we were, who we are, who we were created to be, realizing that while we were still under the curse of sin, it didn't define who we are or the gifts and the talents and the abilities that God placed within us, but beyond and past all of that, he saw the creation that he had, that he had envisioned from the very beginning, and he called you and I by name, and he did everything and continues to do everything that he can to pour his love out on us. What's my response to the world around me? It's love. The unconditional love of God. The love of God gives way to number two. What is my response? Humility. Humility. Tell your neighbor, we got to be humble. Nobody likes to know it all. The greatest know-it-alls are the ones who walk in humility. Because the ones that really do know it all have the wisdom enough to know that when you walk in humility, you have an open door to share the wisdom, the knowledge, or the revelation of what God has given. We live in a society today that readily asks you, what's on your mind? If you open Facebook, if you open Twitter, if you open any social media platform, what's on your mind? And it's not far from what we have, what we've been accustomed to in our culture to ask people, how is it going or what's been happening in your life or what events have been taking place or what's going on. But there's a difference between the two because on social media, you can't read the reactions of the people that are speaking, that are typing, that are writing the same that you can the people that you're having a conversation with. And the thing about, the thing about this, this verse in, in James that I love, verse 21, it says, Therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you, illustrates the importance of humility. In James chapter 4, we're reminded of, again, of, of the power of humility. Humble yourselves before God. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Before we respond to any event, any circumstance, any situation, it does us so much good and so much wisdom to listen, not to just what people are saying, but to listen to the heart of the Father, to listen to what God is speaking, to listen to what the Holy Spirit is trying to say, to listen to the revelation of what God is giving, to have humility enough to know that even if I have the experience, even if I have the initial knowledge, to humble myself before God and say, Lord, speak to me the words that you would have me to say, and give to me the wisdom and the discernment on when to say it, so that when I speak, I convey the heart of God and the revelation and the purpose of what you've given me. When we walk in humility, it positions us to learn. 
It positions us to hear, not just to not just to not hear, but to really listen and to understand the revelation of what it is that God is speaking. That's why it's so important in, the, in our times of prayer that when we're spending time seeking God, that we position ourselves to listen, that we humble ourselves before God and realize, as we sang this morning, that his thoughts really are higher than mine. And that when everything looks a certain way, when everything feels a certain way, the truth is, is that God has has a way in the middle of all of that that brings about the fulfillment of his plan and his promises in my life, not just in what's happening in the world, but what's happening in my marriage, what's happening in my family, what's happening in my finances, what's happening in my business. Instead of me relying solely upon what I know, relying solely upon what others are saying, when I position myself to hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking, I position myself to discover revelation, wisdom, and discernment from God that gives me the things that I need to not only be effective, but to achieve the destiny and the purpose for which he's positioned me. Humility is key to experiencing the revelation of what God has given us. Humility leads ultimately to a place of repositioning to hear God, but also an availability to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. I think one of the greatest truths about, about the Word of God is where the Word reminds us that God has sent the Holy Spirit into the world to convict and reprove the world of sin. God has sent the Holy Spirit. God has sent the Holy Spirit to convict and reprove the world of sin. God did not send you or I to convict or reprove the world of sin. God did, not convict, God did not send you and I to convict and reprove the world of sin. It is not your job and it is not my job to convict or reprove the world of sin. It is the Holy Spirit's. So when I, when I walk into a room, when I walk into a place and my response, the foundation of my life is the unconditional love of God. And I walk in the humility and the revelation that the Holy Spirit is giving and the discernment that God has given me. When I speak out of that place, when I react out of that place, that my reactions and the words that I speak are not my own, but that of God, of the Holy Spirit in that moment that gives Him the opportunity to bring truth, which brings freedom, grace, which brings in the salvation, and His Word, which brings about the revelation, the freedom and the transformation that the world so desperately needs. Now more than ever, what God is calling us to do and the response that He is calling us to have is one out of love and one out of humility. Repentance is key to being the life of a believer that grows. Upon our salvation, God does not stop growing with us. There is a transformation process as we grow with God where we learn more about who we are and about things in our life that are keeping us from the full potential promises and blessings that God has and ultimately the purpose of why He's positioned us where He has. Repentance is what eliminates the enemy's tactics and strategies and schemes to steal, kill, and destroy so that we can walk in the abundant life that God has called us to. Repentance is not a one-time deal. Repentance is an ongoing process of transformation. And as the Holy Spirit brings to light things where we have been wrong, where we have said wrong or we have done wrong, we walk in the repentance of what God has established. And then we realize that upon that, God has freed us and we take authority over the condemnation of the enemy. And we walk in response only to the leading of the Holy Spirit and the conviction that he brings when the Holy Spirit brings conviction, it always brings transformation, not condemnation, guilt, or shame. If you have felt condemnation, guilt, or shame, you need to lay it at the feet of Jesus. If you felt conviction, you need to bring it before the Father. Let Him reveal what things in your heart need to be addressed. Repent, grow, and move forward. Responding in love, responding in humility. Humility brings about the freedom that God has. Thirdly, 
What is my response? It's honor. Verses 22 through 27. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard but doing it, he will be blessed by what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight ring on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows and their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Honor is love and action. Honor is love and humility and action. Humility, humility positions us to see what's happening around us. Love positions us to be able to carry out not just our words, but also our actions to honor those that God has placed around us. These three things are core values of our church family. To love, to walk in humility, and to honor. Honor is what opens the door for the anointing of God and the Holy Spirit who brings change and transformation. I am not interested in being a church who has a form of godliness but denies the power. I'm not interested in being a church that just has a place for us to meet so when we leave we feel better that we have met our weekly quota and go about our lives trying to figure it out on our own. I'm interested in being the church that Jesus said that the gates of hell would not overcome but that would be the hope, that would be the answer, that would be the solution to a world that was dying and that was missing out on the promise of God's word, of the salvation, of the healing and of the freedom that God brings. I'm interested in being a church where we one-on-one are spending time with the Father and together are uniting to bring about the fulfillment of His plan as we see His kingdom come and we see His will be done. As we watch, as God breaks down the walls, as God breaks down the, the effects of what past generations may have walked through or may have been through, as we see the chains and generational curses broken off of individuals Individuals as they experience the salvation and the healing and the restoration of heaven. To be a church that walks in the anointing of God and the discernment of the Holy Spirit to realize that it's not just about what I know, but it's about what I do in response to the revelation of what God has given me. That when I see someone who's sick, that I believe in what God has said and what He has spoken and I pray and I see them healed. When I see the pain and the chaos and the uncertainty that's happening in the world around me, that instead of speaking based on my own understanding or revelation, that I speak based on the word of God and begin to see as change happens, as I begin to pray and declare his word and his promises, as I humble myself before the Lord and repent on behalf of my nation and repent on behalf of those who have gone before me and position myself for this season, for such a time as this to watch as the lost are saved, as the sick are healed, as the bound are set free, as the dead are raised, to know that for such a time as this, the church has been called in position to speak the love of God, to walk in the humility of heaven, and to honor what God has called, what God has created, and what God has chosen. My response is the same as what it has been from the moment that I said yes to Jesus and will be my response until he takes me off this earth. It is to love, walk in humility, and to honor. To not just say I love, but to walk it out in action. To not just hear what God says, but to respond in obedience and to see his plan and his promises come to pass. What is my response when the enemy takes the situations and circumstance of a world that is broken and and cursed by sin. It is love, humility, and honor. Honor positions us for what God has said, for what God has spoken. I challenge you, church, before you speak out on anything that's happening, take the time to listen. Tell your neighbor, listen. I know we all got something to say especially after three months of being locked up. I got a lot to say. But before we say it, can we hear the heart of the Father? Can we address what's happening in our world from the perspective of heaven? Before we judge, 
anyone? Can we look at them through the eyes of Christ? Can we speak truth in love? Can we extend grace in love? One of the greatest things that I believe we are challenged with today in the church in America is the balance of grace and truth. There's a balance of grace and truth. And the enemy knows the fight for the balance. That The one that keeps the balance is the Holy Spirit. You can speak truth that brings freedom, but if it's not presented in the grace and the love of God, it'll never bring change, but only condemnation. If all you ever present is grace, you'll never have freedom because there is no truth. The truth and the grace that God has is all based on the balance of what God has said and what God has spoken. And too many times we generalize everything into one category and we begin to react and respond and base on those positions and we never hear the heart of the Father. So when we react, when we respond, let's respond in the love and the humility and the honor that God has called us to. Let's stay on mission with the task that God has given us to see His kingdom come and His will be done. That all of the enemy's tactics, anger, hate, frustration, addiction, pain, division, prejudice, racism, anger, hate, that all of it would be met with the truth and the grace of the Word of God. In every one of those situations that we face, what is my response? The grace, the truth, and the love, humility, and honor that Jesus has called me to. All of these things are evident and prevalent because I believe the enemy is doing whatever he can to bring division, to wreak havoc and destruction. But I refuse to give in. And I refuse to settle. I'm going to continue to walk in the love and continue to walk in the response that God has called me to. Don't judge people based on what they say. Judge people based on what they do. God says, you'll know my disciples by the fruit that they bear. That's the evidence of their actions. You can talk to me all day long about everything that, that you say, but I don't judge you based on what you say. I judge you based on what you do. And you say, Connor, you are not supposed to judge. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, yes, I am. as you should me. We judge each other by the fruit that we bear. But not judging is the ones that don't know. Be careful about what you say. About the ones that God gave his son for. They're who we're called to reach. And if our response isn't in love and humility and honor, how will we ever be able to share with them the gospel? I'm not saying don't speak the truth but do it in love, humility, and honor. Hear what's being said and ask the Holy Spirit, how can I respond? If you see a friend that's hurting, if you see a friend that's in that place, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And my last thing I'll say is this. If somebody offends you, do not use social media to address it. Do not pick up your phone and call somebody else and tell them you have a prayer request and tell them about how so-and-so offended you. You are not, you are sinning. The word's clear. If a brother offends you, go to them. If a sister offends you, go to them. Have a conversation in person where you can see and hear and know the heart of who you're talking to. Social media is great for pictures of your family and friends and fun times. But to try to address the heart issues of the Father and to react based on what someone has said will only position you in a place of robbing you of an opportunity to bring about the transformation, the healing, the restoration and redemption that God has for the world. As a church, we're going to continue to respond to what's happening in our world by locking arms with our brothers and sisters and ministering to our community with every opportunity that we have. And you'll see more of that as we continue to do what God's told us to do and continue to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit.
It's about our actions, not solely on our words. Speak when God says speak. And pray in between. Hear the heart of God. Declare his word. Amen. Stand with me, would you, this, this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. God, what is our response? Our response is your response. Lord, let us walk in love. Let us walk in humility. Let us walk in honor. God, we pray for our nation today. Lord, we pray for those that are hurting. We pray for those that are broken today. God, we pray for those that their hearts are shattered, that, Lord, you would bring about healing and truth. God, that you would bring about redemption and restoration. God, I pray today that as the church, you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear what your Holy Spirit is saying. That, Lord, we will walk in the wisdom and the discernment of the Heavenly Father. That, God, our heart would be your heart. That our thoughts would be your thoughts. That our mouth would speak your words. That, God, we would see love and truth and grace bring about the transformation that you have called us to. That, Lord, we would walk in the identity that you have called us to as sons as daughters of God, Lord, seeing your word and your will come to pass. God, I pray for those that are faced with impossible situations today, Lord, with uncertain outcomes, that you would give them wisdom and discernment on how to respond, that, Lord, as they respond in love, as they walk in humility, as they walk in honor, that, God, you would give them wisdom and discernment, Lord, on how to respond in, in situations with their marriage, in situations, God, with their family, in situations with their finances, God, with decisions that need to be made at work, Lord, for those that are looking for jobs or in need of provision today. God, I pray that you would be that source for them. Lord, I thank you for the healing that is coming on our nation as we seek your face. God, as we humble ourselves before you, as we repent, God, we repent for the sins of those that have gone before us. And God, we ask for your forgiveness today, that Lord, we would walk in the healing, that we would walk in the redemption, and we would walk in the truth of what you have called us to. Lord, let healing and restoration come on this land, that God, we would walk united as one in the body of Christ. Lord, seeing your kingdom come and your will being done. Lord, I thank you for the truth of your word today. I thank you for hope and joy that's being renewed in the hearts and lives of your people. I thank you for your peace and your joy that's going before us. I thank you for a hedge of protection that is surrounding each one here and those online today. That, Lord, every attempt of the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy is being broken. And that, God, your anointing is flowing in us and through us to be your hands and feet to the world around us. That, God, we will see your kingdom come and your will being done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Listen, I want to thank you guys so much for being here this morning. It was so, so good to see each and every one of you. And um, I know that this is different and this is unique, but we're going to continue uh, to, uh, to follow those guidelines and to honor those that God has placed in authority over us and, uh, and see that plan fulfilled. Miss Diane, do we have offering plates at the back? that are available. Would you check real quick and see? Brother Randy, would you mind being available um, back there and here in just a moment? Amen. Brother Floyd, do you care to help her with that? Thank you. Um, you can give. If you came prepared to give today in person, you can do that on your way out. Thanks to everybody that's dropped by or that has mailed in or that has given online um, through all of this. Um, you may have noticed the, the construction sign that was in the churchyard if you drove by over the last couple of months. Um, through all of this, we had a new roof that was put on the entire campus. So the sanctuary, kids area, fellowship hall, and gym. Um, we have battled with that for 10 years. And um, we have tried and tried everything. We've spent thousands of dollars trying to repair the leaks. It was uh, there were some faulty parts with the shingles and, and other things. And so um, I just began praying when I became pastor, Lord, we need a solution. And so I had two prayer, I had two requests before God. I said, God, either send us the money to be able to pay for this roof because it's expensive. Or send us just a little hailstorm at 1275 Mall Road so that we can get some, you know, some, some help to get this taken care of. And, uh, you know, I, I tell you all the time, ask God, because you just never know. And um, right before all of this happened with the pandemic, we 
were having trouble with leaks in the gym floor. And of course, it was only on Wednesday nights when we had students in there playing basketball or Tuesday nights. We have kids in our community that come and use it to practice and we open that up. I believe if we got it, we should be using it to bless our community and, and, and to be a blessing. And so we, we use it for that. And it was only then that we were having trouble. And so I asked Miss Diane to call the guys that we had had before. They were good. They'd done a great job. And I said, we've got new leaks. Ask them to come. And so the owner of that company came and he said, you know, Connor, he said, you guys have a bad installation. These shingles are in, in good shape. He said, I don't know what the deal was with them when you had them. He was like, you need a brand new roof. And I said, I know. And he said, well, let me get up there and see what we can do. And I said, if nothing else, give me a quote on at least the gym. I at least need to get the gym taken care of. We have our most trouble there. And so uh, Brad Lumen is the owner of AAA Construction. If you need a roof... Or if you think you have hail damage on your roof, call him. He will come and do a free inspection on your house. If it turns into a job, he sends a commission check to the church um, for 150 bucks. We got, we got one just the other day from somebody that had stopped by and that had seen our sign on the job. And he sent me a check just the other day. So I say praise the Lord. We were able to, to do missionary support for one of our missionaries, for one of our global partners. But um, so Brad got up there and he took a look at the roof and he came into my office about an hour later and he said, Connor, I don't know if you know this or not, but you have hail damage on your church. And I said, we do? And he said, did you have a hailstorm recently? And I said, well, not that I know of. And this was before the big hailstorm that we had this spring. This was before all of that. And I said, well, not, not that I know of. And so he said, well, you need to call your insurance. So we called the insurance and they came out. They took a look. They said, you definitely need a new roof. They said, we're going to replace all the roof, all the roofs that are on 1275 Mall Road on the campus. Everything's getting a new roof. And uh, I said, praise the Lord. And while the insurance adjuster was here, he said, you also have another property. He said, you guys own a parsonage or something? And I said, we sure do. It's at 1354 Pepper Tree. And if you know where that house is, it's right there. And they went over and there was no hail damage on the parsonage roof. It was just on the roof here at the church. You tell me. Interesting. Yeah. You make it a matter of prayer and you trust the Lord with the results. And God answers prayer. And he makes a way. Amen? Amen? So we have a brand new roof with no leaks. A major prayer that's been answered for us. And they were putting it on in the middle of a pandemic. If, you, if you're not amazed at watching what God does when you trust him. So there was nobody that was here during that process. And, uh, and it was just amazing to watch as God provided and God made a way. And that was just something I wanted to share with you behind the scenes of what we saw God do. And there's many more stories that I'm going to share with you over the next couple weeks. But right now, I'm going to let you go home. So uh, it's, it's good to see you. I love you. Oh, yes, we got the new sign. Thanks, Miss Barbara. Yeah, we got that. And uh, it got put up this week. And so it uh, looks a lot better than our old banner that was down there. Amen. So we're making changes and improvements as we go. We're going to be talking to you about the projectors uh, this next week. So uh, get ready. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Thanks for being here this morning. If we can have those that are at the back make their way out first and then just kind of follow uh, as they go. Make sure you wear your mask. We love you guys. We'll see you online Wednesday at 630 and next Sunday at 1030. God